right. Um, do we have any image? So good afternoon, and thank you for the invitation. Thank you, Professor Beeser. It is an honor being in this symposium. Thank you, all of you, for coming. And yes, we have the images. So um, it is useful to measure the middle cerebral artery to use Doppler in all these cases. Let's, let's, let's try to see what we can do. So this is the conclusion that uh, Professor Hecker uh, explained in his slides. So this is the conclusion of the last paper of the Truffle group with Tamara Stampalilla, who did this study. And they say that it's unlikely that the middle cerebral artery and its radius, both of them, they can be useful or informative for the time of delivery. I agree with that. However, before we go to this conclusion, let me just explain something that we can include in our clinical management of these babies. So we have fetal growth restriction, but not all these babies are the same. And we use umbilical artery Doppler to define which ones they have a higher or a lower risk. So putting everything inside in one bag is probably not the best way to analyze this data. So we use and we follow uh, one of the uh, proposals of Professor Karen Marshall uh, some years ago using just umbilical artery Doppler. So you can see the different groups. Group one is the small for gestational age with normal umbilical artery. Group two is fetuses with increased pulsatility index but still diastolic flow. Group three is absent uh, diastolic velocities. Group four is reverse in diastolic velocities. These are not the same. Even that we can put them inside in the same group and in the same bag, they are not the same. They are different prognosis and they have different clinical outcomes. So in our center, we divided these three groups. If you remember, group two is increased, but still diastolic velocities. Group three is absent. Group four is reversed. And you can see the different outcomes in these babies. It is increasing the uh, prevalence of abnormal outcome, but it changes totally. Uh, between absent and reverse end diastolic flow. You can see mortality increases from 7% to 36% in fetuses with reverse end diastolic flow. So putting everything together is probably not the same. We, we have to divide these groups and these fetuses in order to find a better clinical management. But in general, we uh, include absent and reverse end diastolic flow in the same group, which is actually to your left. And that's how clinically we are managing these fetuses despite that they probably have different outcomes. So this is the prevalence in our group with the uh, middle cell and pulsatility index in all these fetuses with increased pulsatility index in the umbilical artery. What I wanted to show you is that most of them, they have a low MCAPI. However, some of them, they have it normal, and some of them, they have it even higher. It is true that the MCAPI, it is related with abnormal uh, oxygen concentration. This is a study done by Professor Nicolaides many years ago, putting a needle in the, in the umbilical cord, things that we cannot do anymore. And you can see that we are highlighting that the MCA pulsatility index and resistance index, it is significantly associated with the level of oxygen in the umbilical uh, cord. And it is also associated with the level of the PCO2 in the same group. So it is associated with low or high levels of oxygen in the umbilical cord blood. The <clears throat> sorry. The second point is that the abnormal MCA in fetal growth restriction is associated with the increased prevalence of lesions. This is a study done by the group of Edward Gratacos, and you can see the different prevalence in hypoxic and hemorrhagic lesions in fetuses, growth restricted fetuses with a brain vasodilatation. So it is associated with an abnormal outcome. And this is a paper from the group of Francesc also showing that fetuses, early fetuses of severe growth restriction with abnormal uh, MCA below the fifth percentile and you can see it in the black columns, they have a higher prevalence of abnormal neurological test at birth. So it is related, abnormal MCA is related with reduced PO2 values and with increased prevalence of functional and anatomical damage in the brain. So uh, in the first group that we have that is, is a small for gestational age, with increased PI, but still diastolic flow, what can we do with these fetuses? Normally they can go on until the end of the pregnancy, some of them, they will probably deteriorate. Some of them, they will continue as the same. We probably will not take any decision. What can we do? Well, the cerebral placental ratio seems to be a good parameter for the identification of those fetuses at risk. There are no guidelines for these fetuses. However, 
in some groups, they recommend that because of the fit and grow restriction and the presence of brain vasodilatation, induction of labor at 37 weeks may be a good idea in order to reduce the rate of perinatal outcome. And this is a, a part of the uh, data that uh, uh, Professor Morales Roselio and, 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 and Asma Khalil have been publishing on the cerebral placental ratio that it is important to measure this parameter because it is associated with poor perinatal outcome and also with reduced uh, pH values in the, umbilical, in the umbilical cord after birth. What can we do in fetuses that they have absent or reverse in diastolic velocities in the umbilical artery? Three things we have to consider. One, gestational age, it's the best or probably the most important parameter. Prenatal treatment, what are we giving to the fetuses? And then ductus venosus pulsatility index or Doppler waveform. So this is just to show that gestational age at delivery is the most important parameter for a survival. And this is a paper from Ahmed Bashad showing, it according with gestational age, the higher rate of survival. So they, they found in this study that after 29 weeks, if we deliver those babies, we have a very good chance to have intact survival. And after 26 weeks, we have also a good opportunity to have survival in these fetuses. So gestational age is important for taking the decision. And then we have the other end point in the other side that is the abnormal ductus venosus. When we have this sign, all of us probably we can conclude that we have to deliver this baby. So these two points are important. But what happens if the ductus venosus is still normal and we have a small baby? What can we do? What the MCA can provide to us? Most of these fetuses will be treated with steroids for long maturation. This is a paper also for the group of Professor Marshall showing that after steroids, we have changed in Doppler, in Doppler parameters. You can see that the umbilical artery, ductus venosus, and the MCA, they change probably not in the same rate, but all of them change. So we have to take this into consideration when we analyze the Doppler data. They change. And this change, just here, this change, they remain even after four days of the treatment. So every time that we consider the evaluation of the Doppler data, we have to think if the, that fetus received treatment or not before. If we use a, a tocolyte, a tocolysis in some cases, in these cases with nifedipine, we also can see changes in the umbilical artery Doppler and the MCA Doppler. So those two treatments, they can affect the Doppler waveform in these severely growth-restricted fetuses. And this is the paper that Professor Marshall was talking about, and, and we agree in, in this paper that fetuses with uh, absent or reversing diastolic flow that they are delivered, they have probably a better outcome than waiting until the uh, ductus venosus became abnormal. And you can see the comparison, uh, the fetuses with absent or reversing diastolic flow compared with the other two groups, that they are preterm babies without abnormal Doppler, they were completely uh, the same. The risk was not different. So delivering fetuses at this gestational age with absent or reversing diastolic flow before 30 weeks, probably it's a safe and a good decision. What else can we do with the, with the MCA? There are four things that we can see in our Doppler measurements. First, if it is very low, the pulsatility index is very low. Second, if we have a normalization of the pulsatility index, then if we have a very high pulsatility index, and then increase velocities in the MCA. So what about those ones that they are very low? This is again the plot of our values. You can see all cases plotted there. But then when we just plot fetuses that they die, this is perinatal die, that you can see the pulsatility index, the distribution, that it is extremely low. So it is associated with perinatal mortality. This is not new data. This was published before by, uh, by Giancarlo Mari, and this is a similar distribution of data showing that the pulsatility index, very low pulsatility index, is associated with perinatal mortality. What about the normalization of the uh, MCI pulsatility index? This is also a paper from uh, Professor Conge, and he's showing that if the pulsatility index, instead of going down, is going up and going to the normal uh, parameters, that it is wrong. And you can see the two uh, black circles, that those are fetuses that they have perinatal dead. So actually, this is not a good sign, this is a bad sign. And this is another paper, we did it also uh, with the Professor Gratakos, and you can see at different stages of deterioration in the umbilical artery for, if you remember, it's absent or reverse, we, ha we have an increment in the pulsatility index. 
of the of the MCA is coming back to the normal values. So when you see that the changes are going up, probably it's not a good idea. Probably something is wrong in those fetuses. And this is a plot of our data. You can see fetuses with uh, still not critically abnormal ductus venosus and fetuses with critically abnormal ductus venosus. And you see that the MCA pulsatility index is higher in those ones that they have an abnormal uh, ductus venosus. Uh, showing that it is going up to normal values, but actually this is not a good sign. And this is a summary of this, just showing that the uh, normalization of the MCA PI is increased uh, uh, um, almost four times the possibility of perinatal mortality in these fetuses. There are some reports also showing that increased velocity, it is also a bad sign. This is also a paper showing that not just the increased sign, but the presence of notch in the MCA may be associated with an abnormal outcome. This is a case report. However, there are different case reports showing that the increment in the MCA pulsatility index is a bad prognosis, and it is also associated with intraventricular hemorrhage. And this is another paper showing that not just one measurement, but different measurements and changes in the different measurements can be associated with abnormal perinatal outcome. You can see in the lower part of the graph that those fetuses that they have very acute changes one day after the other, they have a higher risk of abnormal prevalence of perinatal outcome. And then just to finish, increased velocities in the MCA in the MCA Doppler waveform. This is also this was also reported by Giancarlo Mari, showing that increment in the MCA it is associated not only to anemia, but it can also be associated with perinatal mortality. So all these parameters they have it taken into consideration. So how can we what, what can we conclude? First, growth restricted fetuses are not, 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 they are not the same. So we have to divide those ones that they have a higher or a lower risk, I'm finishing. In fetuses that we have still diastolic flow in the umbilical artery, even that it is high, it is better probably to wait until 37 weeks of gestation, and if the cerebral placental ratio is abnormal, probably we have to induce labor at that gestational age. In fetuses with absent or reversing diastolic velocity, we have to keep looking at the MCA, and then a very low or a very high pulsatility index or very acute changes during, uh, between examinations may be a manifestation of fetal deterioration and may be an indication for delivery. And the final conclusion is that we cannot use it as an isolated parameter. We have to include the MCA uh, in the complete management of these fetuses and put the information together in order to have the better clinical decision. Thank you for your attention.